This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. We're pleased to welcome back to Newsmax Robert Emmett Tyrrell. He's a best-selling book author, nationally syndicated columnist, and founder and editor-in-chief of The American Spectator. He has a new book out. It's entitled, After the Hangover, The Conservatives' Road to Recovery. Nice to have you with us again, Bob. Good to be with you, Ashley. In your book, you describe conservatism as America's longest dying political movement. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, you know, and, and oh, I, I decided to write this book in late 07 and 08. And at that time, we had done badly in, that, uh, in the 08 election, done badly in the 06 election. And there were larger and larger numbers of basically liberals insisting that conservatism was dead, as Sam Tannenhaus wrote a book, Conservatism is Dead. And I thought to myself, wait a second, that sounds sort of familiar. They've been saying that since the founding of the conservative movement in the in 1950s, uh, 1964, 1970, the early, at the, the demise of Richard Nixon. And of course, in, in 1992, with the election of, of uh, okay. Bill Clinton, they've all, they, for every several years, it's a dying, and yet, as you'll see in After the Hangover, uh, over these years, the conservative movement has grown, plateaued, diminished a little, grown to a higher plateau, diminished a little, and kept growing. While liberalism, as I point out in After the Hangover, liberalism is the one that's been dying until now it's only 20% of the American people as opposed to 40, 44% of the American people that say they're conservative. So the real, the truly dying uh, uh, movement in the country is a liberal movement. You chose to spell the word liberal with a capital L. Why? Because they're not liberals. Uh, they, they never were liberal. I mean, liberals, 19, the term liberal properly understood is uh, 19th century liberal, liberty-loving, empiricist, rational, uh, rationality, empiricism, <laughs> liberty-loving. These are things that don't characterize Amer the American liberal. So I, I capitalize it. Okay. Um, I understand William F. Buckley Jr. did the same thing, according to your book, right? Yeah. yeah. I got the idea originally mm -hmm. from Bill, and um, I'm going to carry it on. It's just unfair. It's a good term. Uh, Hayek, uh, one of the founders of modern conservatism, uh, I quote him in, after the hangover, saying, uh, repining the fact that we allowed the social democrats, the new dealers, to take that good term. We know the White House and Congress is as far left as they've ever been, perhaps most so in our history. But how much has conservatism been damaged? How much was it damaged during the Bush presidency? Well, I think it was damaged heavily. I mean, this is one of the points. I mean, that's why I say after the hangover, they spent money like drunken sailors. And I mean no offense to drunken sailors. Um, uh, but the liberals participated, and the liberals have gone even further. And in the meantime, a wonderful new crop of conservatives, a wonderful new outpouring of conservatives. The Tea Party people, for instance, have come aboard and given vibrancy to conservatism and returned us to our liberty-loving roots. This crop you're talking about, let's include Eric Cantor there, Mike Pence and Kevin McCarthy in the House. They get perfect scores from the Conservative Political Action Committee. There are many others in the House. And over on the Senate side, you have John Cornyn, Jim DeMint, Jim Inhoff, John Barrasso, Mike Enzi, Tom Coburn, and four others getting perfect scores. Does that encourage you? Absolutely. And don't leave out, I don't know what his score might have been, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. In After the Hangover, I outline a, a, a program for the future. That's not particularly original with me. It's much more original with Paul Ryan. He's laid out a roadmap for the future. Much of it is in my book. Uh, and we've got policies to return America to prosperity and security, and, and they're proven policies. And that's what I want to I want to urge people when they get after the hangover to take a look at that section and thank Paul Ryan and Mike Pence and these smart guys in, in the House and gals, too. How important to the revival of conservatism is the Tea Party? Well, I think uh, I did a, uh, at the Heritage Foundation recently, I did a, a seminar with Michael Barone in which he was going over after the hangover and talking about the Tea Party. And he, uh, the Tea Party, uh, set, there's nothing particularly any newer about the Tea Party than there was about the Federalist Papers and the Founding Fathers. Uh, they set the tone for American political discourse. They laid the foundation in the United States Constitution for our belief in liberty in this country and our belief in limited government. 
Uh, and the Tea Party is just a renaissance of all those ideas. But Barun told me something I had not been aware of, and that was in the last several, well, in the la from 1937 on to about 1940, uh, there was an outpouring of impatience amongst Americans toward the New Deal. And he said, because the New Deal threatened to suppress traditional American liberties. And Barone said, uh, argues that had we not had, had we not confronted World War II, it's, it's, it's conceivable that the Republicans would have mounted a very, very f strong offensive against FDR based on an earlier Tea Party movement, that of the last thir uh, late 1930s. Why do you think Sarah Palin is such a lightning rod for liberals? The liberals, again, I talk about the liberals at some length in this book. They're, some, they're phony sophisticates. Uh, two generations ago, they might have been legitimately sophisticated people, but they're phony sophisticates. Uh, and, and in their phoniness, uh, they really hate the middle class. They really, really hate middle class values. And uh, she embodies middle class values and she does it with charm and it drives them mad and I enjoy watching it. I refer to her in the book and I refer to her every opportunity as the pulchritudinous Sarah Palin. She's beautiful, what am I to say? And they can't get to her either, apparently. No. Uh, they can't least, rattle her. They can't rattle her and um, I think that's because she's good natured. I mean that's wonderful, one of the wonderful things that, that puts to light all of this nonsense about the, the Tea Party people being um, dangerous and, and violent and all of that. It's a pretty, for a large group of people, it's a pretty good-natured group. I call it in the book a civic upheaval of good-natured people uh, defending American values. Or in more serious note, a recent comment by President Obama referring to the U.S., whether we like it or not, we remain a dominant military superpower. Now, somehow it's hard to imagine Ronald Reagan ever saying those words. Exactly what could Obama have meant by that? Well, uh, what he, it's not a question of what he meant. It's a question of who do you think he was talking to? Um, he, look, it, it's an example of the insularity of these American liberals. I mean, they don't know conservatives, they don't know middle America, and they don't even want to know us. Uh, at my se heritage seminar, I couldn't get a liberal to come down and, and I, I, Michael Barone, that's about as liberal as I could get. They didn't want to come down and talk with me, yet they're the people that say we lack intellectual curiosity. What he, when, when, when Obama got up and, and, and uttered that foolishly insular statement, what he sounded like was the Obama, if you listen to, to him carefully, the Obama you hear an awful lot. That's a very bright guy talking to a seminar at the University of Chicago with 12 other very bright people who haven't a clue as what's going on outside the walls of the University of Chicago. Bob, do you think there's still liberals around today that lament the demise of the Soviet Union? What has astonished me, I mean, one of you asked me earlier if uh, I was optimistic or pessimistic in 08, and I told you I was curious. I mean, history, to, history is always interesting. Uh, and when the, when the Cold War ended, victoriously for the West, with us not having to fire a shot, I thought, surely this is an opportunity for the old Cold Warrior liberals like Arthur Schlesinger, people like that, and the Kennedys, uh, the earlier Kennedys, and Ronald Reagan and the conservatives to all celebrate together a great victory for America because Early liberals had, had resisted communism just as strongly as we had. But instead, to my astonishment, almost immediately, the liberals started saying, well, I guess we never should have wasted that money on, on the military. We didn't have to fight that war. I couldn't have believed it. But it just shows you once again that history is filled with curiosities. Conservative talk hosts like Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity say they're afraid for the country under the Obama, Pelosi, and Reid regime. Do you share that apprehension? Well, I know what they're talking about, but I am fearful that he has already rung up such an extravagant bill in terms of future payment that will be borne by our children uh, that certainly we're going to take a, it's going to take a long slog to get us out of it. But as I say and after the hangover, we've got the leadership and we really have the principles. Our principles are so sound, particularly in economics, that the, the socialist Indians, the socialist, the, the communist Chinese 
picked up our ideas of economic growth a decade or more ago, and look with how, they're, how vibrant their economies are. We can, they learn from us, and we can again learn from them now. Uh, it's our views that are spreading, not Obama's. And finally, Dick Morris tells us he's absolutely certain the Republicans will regain control of both the House and Senate this November. Do you agree with him? I can't say I'm absolutely certain, certainly about the Senate, but uh, I think we got the House, uh, we'll get the House well in hand, and it's entirely likely that we'll get the Senate. So once again, I celebrate Dick Morris. Again, the name of the book, After the Hangover, The Conservatives' Road to Recovery. It's available now at Amazon.com and at bookstores everywhere. Bob Tyrrell, a pleasure, sir. Great to be with you. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Come Ash. back and see us. I'll be back. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Thank you.